Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, thank you for showing interest in uh, what we call environmental and interior design. I know that some of you have questions, um, which is quite natural when you sign up for a program. And um, hopefully this session will give you more insight, clarity, and also address some of the uncertainty that you have. Okay. My name is uh, Dr. Gerard Brains. I'm a discipline leader of environmental and interior design. I've been part of the faculty now for nine years. So I've seen the program change over the last uh, uh, three years specifically because we've had to refresh it and adapt it to suit to new type of skill sets but also new types of ways of how we respond to industry. I think what is important to emphasize at this point is that when you enter or join ENI, you shouldn't be dispelled or think that it is simply just one type of professional experience that you will get. Because in, when you talk about environmental qualities, you will actually be dealing with a lot of scales and spatial questions. When you deal with interior design, you would be dealing not just with interiority, but also architecture and at some points, possibly urban design. So you have to see it as a type of multidisciplinary, multi-scale um, professional uh, qualification. And it's important that you understand that. And it's very different, and I think you know this, because a lot of other disciplines or courses or curricula would require you to sit in a lecture hall with 500 students and that you will extract your knowledge from maybe a thousand page booklet but in, when we talk about design, specifically when it comes to space, you will have a lot of hands-on experience, meaning models, making things, breaking things, testing things, drawing things, and m producing three-dimensional objects from that. Um, what is important is that we operate on a studio culture. Like I said, you will not be sitting just in lecture halls. Your classes, more often than not, would be no more than 30, 40 students, if as many. When you do join us from, as a top-up student, then it means that your class size will be probably 42 in the studio environment. And we really operate a lot within that studio environment. That means you will be sitting with a desk, you will have a dedicated space, you will have an opportunity to sit and talk and discuss with your colleagues shoulder to shoulder in that environment where you make things and apply the knowledge that you extract from other courses. So basically year one, I don't know if you know, but we have just implemented a new curricula. That means that for your year one, you will be exposed to primary skill sets within um, design. And it might not be applicable to most of you here, but it is important to know that slowly but surely every year we will now update or roll out the new course structure. So for year one specifically, it deals with the idea of space. It deals with the idea of representation. It deals with the idea of making and of materials. And then added to that, ideas of scale. So all of these things are being packaged within a new type of studio environment with different tutors where they will alternate so you actually get a very wide and a very broad type of experience to enrich your I would say your core foundation within the program. These are examples of previous student uh, examples of student work where they really dealt with understanding the body and extending certain functional aspects within body and space. We encourage students to test a lot Students might in the beginning not understand why it is done, but for us it is important that any designer within the spatial discipline understands that one version will probably be followed up by 10 other versions because then you have a better in-depth knowledge of what all of this uh, requires as a profession. And please note that your tutors will at this point, when I started, Possibly only you had three doctors teaching you in the spatial field. Now, basically 50% of your tutors are all qualified doctorates, and they come from institutions such as the Bartlett, Delft, uh, RMIT, uh, and even uh, places like Harvard. So they really, really know their stuff, and they really take that skill, and they 
plow it back into your uh, design uh, knowledge. Year two is when we actually shift the premise from going from the body and space into what we call typological studies. That means your understanding of different room types, how they function, and the largest setting that makes up an environment is being questioned. We have a lot of ongoing work that deals with making and we specifically focus on Tai O at this moment because one of our tutors, Assistant Professor Daniel Alkin, really focuses on certain uh, user group within Tai O and how they produce and replicate certain conditions and functionalities of space. You will see a lot of examples here is really trying to understand the basic human condition of living and that is both at the interior as well as exterior scale. Year three is when we shift the gear once more. This means that we go from very simple typological understanding, meaning from kitchen, bedroom, bathroom, living room, lounge, corridor, staircase, as separate entities, to a condition where, it all, is, where all of this, these conditions are mixed. This means that we draw from Hong Kong as an example. We, take, we do a lot of studies on complex buildings, buildings that have, or spaces that have interlocked um, spatial forms. We try and enrich this these days with um, a lot of 3D modeling, but also a lot of new digital surveying methods like LiDAR scanning, uh, specifically with Matterport and blk to go For most of you, this is probably one of the key uh, moments where you stream into an existing cohort. Um, and this is where you really have to already bring your A game with your digital skill sets. If you don't know Rhino that well, then we will teach you. Um, plus, we throw a lot of expertise into the additional plugins that support digital representation. I don't know if any of you know what the immersive experience is all about or immersive spatial design, but it means that we go from everything that's made or produced physically to things that are represented virtually. So in year three you will also get a lot of exposure through the virtual domain and modeling principle. You will, these are again examples of how those um, or the combination of testing ideas, pr producing or modeling certain prototypes are then brought together. And if these elements or products can actually inform your understanding of spatial design. You will also see a lot of, uh, like I said, immersive modeling happening. Now what you will see there is an example of something that's modeled over a series of two weeks. But that image on the right is about two and a half meters by one and a half meter in size, and every square millimeter has been carefully edited, modeled, and manipulated for a specific reason. So I think it's important that you understand that the ENI program really will challenge you in order to, um, I would say, redefine your skill sets from start to finish. So that what I tell students usually is, for every job opportunity that's out there, there's probably five people applying for that if there's not more. And if you can show that your skill sets are better in a variety of things, then your employability will probably be increased by 150%. So I think that's important to understand that the competition is really, really fierce. So the more you're dedicated to something, the more, I would say, refined and balanced or rounded, you will be able to present yourself to an employer. Year four is the challenging year, right Jane? Um, Jane, you will have an opportunity to talk to Jane, she's in her final semester of the fourth year. But year four is the year where we call it actually the free and open or explorative studio where you are assigned a tutor, you choose from the different themes it is unit driven, so it basically takes the UK Bartlett model and brings it into our environment here. Five or six students will identify specific topics. You elect to be part of a specific topic. The tutoring group 
will vary between six to eight students, so it's very personal and very intense, meaning that it's high quality and high volume of teaching that's dedicated to that graduating student. You will undergo a whole process of conducting research in the first semester, but while all of this is happening, you are expected to develop a position either through a thesis, a narrative, a site, or methodology. And I think if you understand it like that, it actually opens up a wide range of graduation possibilities. In a conventional sense, if this was just a school of interior design or a school of architecture, you would have minimum requirements that fulfill an architectural graduation product or an interior graduation product. But because we are dealing with environment and interior, what you will be able to graduate with could be a way of defining a method of making something, could be a way of rewriting a history of an object of space or the use of space, or it could even be the way that certain printmaking facilities are changing the way that we talk about form, that we talk about pattern, and that we maybe talk about experiences of the environment. These are some examples that have all graduated, and all these examples have gone on to conduct master degrees at reputable uh, postgraduate schools, whether this is in architecture, landscape architecture, urban design, or even interior architecture. So, as you will see here, again, this could just be an example from one graduating year where the variety of the work is so diverse in scale and material uh, representation, but also in the way that th they are positioning themselves within a design context, where what has happened before is as soon as the students present the work, there's prof uh, professionals in the jury and that they already take their business cards, hand them to the graduates and say, we see a potential for you within our firm. Last year we've had three candidates receive job offers within six hours of the final presentation. So I think that says something. And what you will see here is definitely not something you will see in just an architecture school, an interior design school, a product design school. It's all of the above. So I think it opens up a lot of potentials and opportunities for you, whether the, you think, okay, maybe I see this as a stepping stone, or maybe I see this as the basis through which I can go on to do a postgraduate and even a PhD qualification. Um, these are, again, more examples, and you will see it really takes on digital production, uh, hand abilities, modeling, fabrication, etc. Every year, each of the study years are supported by a series of electives. The electives um, is, or is drawn from a pool from within the School of Design, which you can choose from. But it also gives you an opportunity to choose electives that are outside of the School of Design. So when we talk about the electives here, it means that there's maybe part-time tutors or full-time tutors that actually want to develop one specific core technical issue in an elective and you take that skill set and you apply it back into your design studio. So see the design studio as, as a mechanism that catches all the knowledge that you gain from the electives. Usually electives are just three credits or two credits, and the core studio, which is the bulk of your educational environment, is six. We have extracurricular activities. Um, we, with the, in the post-COVID uh, era, people are already traveling again, so we have service learning, which is going to Japan, but it also means we have workshops, we have outreach programs, and we even have workshops conducted by ENI PhD students that really, really radicalize the idea of how uh, environmental experiences could be useful in your design practices. In terms of facilities, look, as one sees it, it's quite simple. If you're part of 
ESTE or the School of Design, you have access to everything in the school. You have access to the digital um, production uh, output center. You have access to the 3D printers. You have access to the laser cutters. You have access to um, facilities of binding, making, producing books and graphic uh, uh, products. You have access to the workshops that deal with metal, uh, wood, plastic. You have access to the CNC milling machine or form fabrication or molding. And if you really feel quite passionate about something in terms of, let's say, metalwork, then you can actually talk to your tutor and your tutor will introduce you to the industrial production center. And that then means that slowly but surely this, it's an intensification of your skill sets that you can use other things and facilities within the wider university. I also know that the school is very soon acquiring a 3D robotic arm and what I like to or hopefully see in the not too distant future is where product design students, ENI students, communication design students can actually work together and harness all those technologies part of their graduation projects. I think it's quite beneficial if we manage to widen our scope of understanding that it's not just drawing and section and model building, but actually maybe products that are extracted from um, everyone's uh, graduation experience. What you see on the left is one example of an elective that was called one-to-one, -one, and that means that the whole emphasis was simply focused on the connection between materials. And that's, that's quite unique because in electives usually you would be probably be sitting in a room of 50. But in our electives, there you see you have 15. And it's a very personal, it's a very personal in, uh, type of experience, very much one-on-one -on -one with the tutors and the students. And it gives you that tangible material feeling of things that it's not just paper-based, but actually applied. On the right-hand side, service learning. Right, there's always a question about entry requirements. These things you can read up quite easily in all the perspectives. But I would say, when it comes to submitting a portfolio, there's a certain minimum requirement. When it comes to presenting yourself in the interview, there's a certain minimum requirement. For example, one, don't be late for the interview. Two, be prepared for the interview. Understand also your abilities, what you're good at, what you're not good at. And being honest about that is not a bad thing at all. It actually makes you, the, interv the people doing the interview, aware that you realize that where you need to grow and what you've already covered. When you put together your portfolio, graphic eloquence, a well put, port a well put together portfolio is graphically and visually appealing. It has structure, the information is clear, it has a statement on who you are, what you've done, and it gives a wide variety of examples of work in the creative field. Now, just know that it's not just about building something or painting something or drawing something, it could, could also be part of maybe writing things, but we encourage more visual things and tangible products that you've actually been involved with. So show that, explain that, and don't cut yourself short on just submitting two A4 pieces of paper and think that is a portfolio. Remember, we sometimes get a portfolio that is packaged in a way that looks like a product already. So it comes in a book, it comes in a casing, there's a beautifully inscripted name in it, it tells us exactly who they are, and it really shows the design dedication of that applicant. Now, Questions we've already received. Usually we get these ones. What is the future career path of this qualification? It is very wide and very diverse. Our graduates go on to study in accredited master's programs in Hong Kong U, Chinese U, RMIT, Bartlett. Uh, I mean, we s write these letters of recommendation and it's quite interesting to see the diversity of the programs that people are interested in. 
Last year we've had, I think, six people placed in international programs, of which the most extreme one was in the University of British Columbia in Canada, talking about narrative design, which is quite interesting. Very different to spatial uh, design. But nevertheless, if they have a passion and interest for it, then so be it. So what you will see here is simply many options and you can then choose the scale that you really feel comfortable with or you choose a scale that you want to specialize in. I think that's more important. Can I connect my study towards an architectural degree after my graduation of the subject? It's not subject, but I'd, it's really a qualification. Of course you can, see above. Three, is there any exchange program for senior entry students which related to environmental and interior design? Now, my question is always this. When we have people who come in and want to join ENI, within the first month or six months, semester, they say, can we go on exchange? Exchange programs are arranged based on the quality of the student. If the student is performing well, if there's evidence of good work, if the student can show maturity in being able to handle a lot of work in their study career, we can consider it. But if there's underperformance and the quality is not to par to international standards, then if we do send those students out on exchange, we are actually setting them up for failure. So we're doing you a disfavor. So I think that the idea of exchange is a nice one, but we need evidence to say why it is needed and that you can be able, you can actually handle it. Remember, exchange is a very, uh, I wouldn't just say adulting, but a very mature thing for any student to undertake. You're about probably more than 5,000 kilometers from home. You would have to understand how to set a work routine. The pressure of being alone in a new environment can be quite challenging. But nevertheless, if you manage all those things and we can see from your portfolio and your studio work with us, then of course we can consider it. But don't be fooled by the idea that thinking that, oh, I can use the PolyU program just to jump and do things external or internationally. Our job here is to make sure that you qualify with a minimum level that is actually representable of an industry that not only makes sure that you can fulfill a certain role in a profession, but also that we meet international standards. I can tell you this that the program is internationally visible. It's internationally visible by a lot of famous architects because we get questions from them. And do not forget that we've worked with a lot of people. So we are connected. And then if we send bad students out, then our reputation will be tarnished. So we don't want to do that. So just a heads up. It's always a question we get, so I'm just giving you the full overview of our response and position on that. Has the teaching content changed over time? Absolutely. I mean, just over the last two years with the new curricula, there's a gradual refreshing, refreshment process that happens now uh, in two, three, and four. So year one, totally new. Year two, we're talking about a whole different environmental and digital uh, focus that's being introduced and it will continue until we've gone through to year four. So it definitely has to respond to things that we see internationally, but also technically, how the technology is changing our profession. And I think that, and maybe Jane, you can share your experience when you talk, is that when you go into your, um, uh, your what do you call it when you work in the, in the firm over the summer, no, but the, the placement, uh, if you... Cooperative. Part cooperative project, but also part of your professional experience at being placed within a, in a company, they really, really look for the students who can actually already draw and use a lot of software and software platforms because that is part of things that they really need. Those are sk skill sets that they don't have time to teach you. So, yes, definitely, and you will also be introduced to um, 
the virtual reality, a lot of virtual reality products coming out, plus digital surveying and digital data of the environment. Five, would the non-Jupas interviews be different to the Jupas interviews? No. Exactly the same. How does the interview process work? You get an invitation for an interview. You show up on time. You don't have to be nervous. It's not an interrogation. It's a conversation. You talk about the work that is there. You explain who you are. You will have questions about can you perform in a group? Can you perform under pressure? Can you manage your time properly? Are you calm in certain situations? All these type of things we ask equally to Jupas and non -Jupas. Yeah. I really hope that with all of this that you have a little bit of more insight into what is really required from our side and also notice that all of the tutors, all of the professors, all of the individuals involved in your education are seriously serious and committed to making sure you graduate on time. But equally that we hope we have or attract mature students who understand the need for graduating within a specific school with specific standards. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Brain, for introducing the program and answering some of the questions that you're curious about. So now we pass the time to Jay, who is admitted as a non jupas uh, applicant to the program. And I'm sure that she will share more about her portfolio and her experience in PolyU. Okay, Gamma 第一個project是一個research project 是final year project 現在還在做的它就是一個research project 因為bachelor degree 通常都會比較少的research 多一些是imaginary 但是如果你有接觸到多一些research project 你就會對你以後想apply master 是一個很好的橋梁 我要研究的就是它的時間性就是一個地方如果用不同的時間去看這個地方你會有不同的sense Gapotahimana,Lubin 我去揀了一個project,就是個client都是PolyU的Campus Development Office,我的設計是要做一張凳,前期先做了一個Site Analyst,我設計的凳就是SetCore,這個位置是離PolyU遠少少的,人 使用的人數就相對少,client的要求就是想不想可不可以將 設計一點點放在裡面 
就逗留一個鐘以上嘅，咁就我哋就喺度諗有冇可能做一啲凳係可以有兩個唔同高度嘅咧？咁呢啲咧就係、是、我哋用主要 material 係 stainless steel 咁樣去喺樓下個 workshop poly U workshop 嗰度去自己揼出嚟嘅，係啦，咁<笑>可能唔係好清楚啦。咁有三張凳，咁係係可以攝喺唔同位，全部凳都係可以 flip 啊，或者係通過唔同嘅 insertion 就可以有兩個高度咁樣啦。咁第三個 project 咧，就係、是、我入 Year Three 第一年做嘅 project 嚟嘅，咁亦都係我至今最中意嘅 project 嚟嘅。佢就係一個 narrative project。咁佢講嘅咧就係將一部誒、嗯、電影，外國電影《Wings of Desire》點樣可以將呢個 film 嚟去構想出嚟，係喺香港呢個地方去將佢拍出嚟咧，重新再拍出嚟咧。咁我哋就係要諗一下啊，《Wings of Desire》講嘅係咩故事？咁我呢個故事就係比較悶嘅。如果你冇失眠，就唔建議你去睇啦。咁樣跟住就係講緊兩個天使，就去佢哋係一直喺度睇緊 Berlin。Berlin 係嗰個第二次世界大戰傷害最深嘅一個城市。咁佢哋啲 angels 咧，就係成日都喺度睇到啲人受傷 suffer， 但係佢哋幫唔到佢哋嘅，就係、是、一直睇到佢哋受傷害，所以佢就好有感觸，係講緊佢哋啲 experience。咁我就將呢個故事咧，就重新喺文武廟嗰度拍。咁呢啲就係我哋嘅 presentation board 咁樣，就解釋一下你去點解要咁樣做咁樣。就主要就拍喺呢度啦。咁我畫咗啲人，又畫咗裡面文武廟嘅元素，又加一咗啲嗰個 film 裡面嘅 character， 將佢哋嗰個誒、呃、spatial 嗰個關係喺喺文武廟度重新再展現出嚟。咁我 final 咧就係整咗個有兩個 media 咧，個係 comic 嘅啊。嗯表達方式一個就係 illustration 咁樣，咁主要用到嘅 software 都係 Year Three 嗰陣先開始學嘅，係 Rhino 同埋用咗 Photoshop illustrate illustrator 嗰啲咁樣嘅，係啦。咁就再講一講我，因為我之前冇咁勁啦，咁我之前誒、呃、apply 入嚟 Senior Year 嗰個 design project 咧，我誒呢度都 include 咗三個。咁誒、呃、對比之前 Polyu 做嘅 project 係比較 imaginary 啊，同埋比較。即、就、係、是、個感覺係要想像力多啲。我哋而家做嘅，之前我喺 H A U Space 做嘅 project 係比較實在嘅，係真係有個 site， 係真係要你叫你設計 interior， 你要諗裏邊係咩 material， 咁就實際啲嘅 project 嚟嘅。咁就係講緊我揾一個香港嘅本地牌子去擺佢入去喺 I F C 裏面賣。咁我揀嘅咧就係財記七龍，佢就係一個伯伯專門砌雀龍嘅。咁我就將佢哋誒整雀龍嘅 procedure 咧，咁就要攞意粉咁樣去整咗個簡單嘅 model 啦，就將佢去 apply 落去呢個我嘅 store 嘅 design 裏面咁樣嘅，係啦，咁就係一個你整雀龍都係喺個餅杯度你 punch holes， 跟住去插佢入去咁樣，我就將呢個咧就做咗個 wall display 嗰個架咁樣，係啦。咁、呃、第五個 project 我 include 咧就係一啲 hand drawing 嚟嘅，就係講緊喺一條街呢度行過過去對面，你所感受到啲乜嘢你就畫出嚟。咁我畫嘅咧係垃圾同埋垃圾桶嗰個關係，一個垃圾桶佢打橫打直，佢可以 cover 到嘅 area 係咁多，啲垃圾應該入翻去某一個垃圾桶，根據佢唔同類型嘅垃圾咁樣。係啦，呢度都係同一個 project 嘅誒 hand drawing 咁樣啦。因為嗰陣係未學到點樣畫誒 model、three D model， 全部都係 base on two D， 就誒係啦，只整咗個誒 site model 啦。咁除咗 interior 嘅 project 咧，我 H A U Space 讀嘅第一年都有讀到 graphic design 嘅。咁我就自己對自己呢個 graphic design 嘅作品都好滿意，咁就都放咗入去。佢就係設計講緊 Adidas 嘅嗰、那個誒、呃、樓，佢砌咗出嚟啦咁樣。咁我就將，因為 Adidas 你諗起都係三條線，我就將三或者線或者同呢個 building 形狀嗰個設計元素都擺咗入呢個誒 magazine 嘅嗰個 design 裏面咁樣。好啦，咁我就有翻少少經驗想 share 啦。咁樣如果想整 portfolio 嘅時候咧，我覺得誒、呃、第一個咧就係、是、你要將你最滿意、最新嘅 project 啦，就擺喺前面，就盡量喺人哋睇。嘅第一一開始睇就已經啊 eye catching 係記得你啦，想會繼續揭其他 project 咁樣，就最好就將好嘅擺喺前面啦。咁第二咧就係、是、嗰個 graphic design 係好重要嘅，咁就你要一個好好嘅 template， 要好清晰，係好 consistent， 可以人哋一睇一本係成本好完整嘅感覺咁樣。
咁第三就係 less is more。我記得我上兩年前交嘅咧係二十頁啊嘛，咁就如果你冇二十頁嘅好 project 咧，就唔好夾硬要加啲你覺得唔係好滿意嘅 project 夾硬喺度二十頁。我就覺得誒、呃，你擺一啲你覺得好有自信嘅，或者你係可以 show 多啲 development， 中間唔一定淨係整 final， 可能你 process 啊嗰啲都擺入去係好過你 show 一啲你唔中意嘅嘢，咁就簡單就得㗎啦，唔使話一定要啊要俾你睇曬十個方面我最叻嘅。嘅嘅嘅嘅作品咁樣啦，咁第四咧就係、是、我覺得誒唔係限制於，即係雖然個 course 係 environment and interior design， 但係我覺得唔係淨係限死喺呢一度嘅。如果你畫畫好叻，影相好叻，整 model 好叻，就好似啱啱阿 Sir 都有講嘅，咁我就覺得你係可以。大膽咁樣擺入去，俾佢睇到你嘅長處喺邊度。佢哋都係好願意去誒揾、呃、一啲，即係喺某一方面係有特別叻嘅人去入嚟嘅咁樣。咁對面就再講一講我哋 Polyvinyl 嘅文化啦。因為我啱啱換咗手機就冇咩舊相，呢啲都係最近影嘅。呢、這個就係我哋上年我做嘅作品，黐喺個牆度，我哋全部都係咁樣去 critic 咁樣。呢、這個就係上堂啦。跟住就係後巷有人瞓咗，好攰。因為我哋通常誒喺、呃、PolyU 嘅時間會好長，即係除除咗上堂，但係因為我哋會一齊好多 group project 或者去做誒、呃、做嘢啊、做功課，都可以留喺個 studio 度嘅，所以啲感情就好好咁樣嘅。呢啲就我之前整啲燈啊，同埋呢個係好貴嘅啲 three D scanner 咁樣，仲有呢啲咁啊，我哋呢個就 workshop 度設嗰啲嘢咁樣啦。呢個就係 canteen 咁樣。好啦，就係、是、分享，暫時就係咁多。大家有冇啲咩問題或者？你哋如果有問題可以問誒、呃、我哋同學啦，誒 Doctor Brain 啦，同埋我哋後邊都有兩位同事咧，咁佢哋負責收身嘅。如果有啲 technical 嘅程序嗰啲嘢，你都想知嘅咧，咁佢哋都可以解答嘅。好清楚，明白啦。嗰個 interview 問乜嘢咧？大家都好多信心都知道曬啦，係咪啊？因為佢會大概會問你誒、呃，如果佢大概我問我啲同學啦，第一條都係話點解會揀呢個學校咁樣，你就要好明確自己點解想讀呢一科，即係你有個你要誒、呃、要好明確自己點解想讀呢一科呢間學校，咁你讀完之後你。想做乜嘢？呢啲都係比較重要嘅問題咯，係啊，佢哋一呢幾個就一定係會問嘅咯，係啦。Is there any question？ <笑>你哋係全部都係嚟緊，即係。呢一年報名啦，定係要再下一年先報啊？呢一年啊？哦，明白。唔係咩？差唔多。好高，非常高。睇下你對自己作品要求有幾高。因為我覺得就係、是、誒、呃，你。佢好，你如果做足功課咧，你係唔會 fail 嘅。但係如果你對自己有要求或者你想作品好嘅話咧，就你個個都係好願意去通頂咁樣嘅咯。尤其是係你 final 嘅時候，個個都係即係唔會覺得唔開心嘅，因為你做咗出嚟有作品，誒、呃，你見到嗰個嘢係使咗時間係會係完全唔同，你會好好願意去使呢個時間去做嘅咯，係啊。Is there any overnight work that you have to handle? I I think you need to look. You need to see it in a different way of thinking. You know, I think you need to see it as a course or a discipline that you need to be committed to. It's very different to history. It's very different to mathematics. It's very different to、uh, studying economics. The studio environment. Will require you to work late at times, but it's not outside of the norm. Well, let me put it this way: I always think that students who work too much in the studio and go through the night all the time, I think they have bad time management. That's really my opinion. Because if you get into a rhythm, 
from day one when the semester starts and you just get going, I would say you wouldn't need to be in the studio after nine. But my impression is the students waste time. They spend a lot of time and energy on their phones, chatting, two hour long lunches, and then all of a sudden they wake up by 6 p.m. and like, oh, now I have to work through the night. And, and my impression is also they use that as an excuse to family saying, oh, I, I have to work, it's so intense. But what they're not saying is they're not good at managing their daily activities. The second thing is where other courses would need, require you to spend money on books, right? I don't know if you know, but chemistry, year one, usually the handbook is that thick. And that could be easily a thousand, one hundred, a thousand five hundred dollars. In design, your expenses will not be on the handbooks, it will be on the materials that you would have to buy in order to complete the course. So you have to also be aware of that. And then students say, but yeah, this is so expensive. It is expensive, but we're not asking you to buy books. We're asking you to buy materials to produce the models and the testing. And most of the times, because all the tutors have gone through this process themselves, the response, initial response would probably be, you don't have to do laser printing for the first testing. You do mock-ups, you do small testing, you cut it yourself, maybe your third, fourth or fifth version of that model only is when you start doing it on laser or 3D. And even then, our students are really resourceful. They find a different way and a cheaper way. They might send up the Rhino file to Taobao and it gets sent directly to the faculty for delivery. So these are real practical things that you have to keep in mind. And it's not high school, it is a university. It is a way that you are in competition with all the other design schools in Hong Kong. So you have to, I keep on saying it, you have to bring your A game. There is one thing I didn't mention in the introduction, and that is, even though you might not be, it's, look, it's the title of the course is Environment and Interior Design, and even though you might be interested more in the environmental side, all students who graduate from this E and I program, we call it, you will receive an accredited qualification in interior design. That goes into the registration of the Hong Kong Institute of Interior Designers. So by default, you have that qualification. Now what you do with that as a next step, as a postgraduate study, or even after that, it's totally up to you, right? I just wanted to make that clear. Yomo